Welcome to Spotlight on Six Star Cruises. I'm your host, Karen Worrell, cruise and destination expert for Six Star Cruises. And in this special series, I'm exploring expedition cruising with Seabourn Cruises with my special guest, Robin West, who is the Vice President and General Manager of Seabourn Expeditions. This final episode is about giving you tips on expedition cruising, what to wear, what to prepare, what to bring so that you can enjoy your adventure of a lifetime to the fullest. When you're on an expedition cruise with Seabourn, you're going to some very exciting places around the world. You're visiting the most remote parts of the world by special expedition vessels. A lot of these remote places have climates different than we're used to in the UK. So in this episode, we're gonna take a look at what you should bring with you to pack for each destination area to be prepared to go on all the excursions you want comfortably and safely. But before we bring Robin back and he gives you his top tips for preparing for an expedition cruise, let's take a look at one of the most unique and impressive features of the Seabourn Venture, which is its submarines. Seabourn Venture's submarines are available in the Arctic, Antarctica, Caribbean, uh, and Central and South America. They bring you an exhilarating undersea exploration experience on their custom-built six-person expedition submarines. They bring you deep under the water and closer to the wildlife there, while the underwater 4K video camera will record your experience. You sit in comfort and luxury, staying dry in the two transparent spheres with leather swivel seating. Everything is taken care of, including climate control and chilled champagne on board to toast your amazing voyage. The windows allow expansive underwater viewing, all in luxurious comfort. The sub's powerful lights illuminate the underwater world. Three people maximum sit on each side, and you even have a Bluetooth stereo to have a soundtrack to your trip if you choose. The submarines dive down to 300 meters, almost a thousand feet below the surface, all in the environmentally friendly battery powered submarine, looked after by the highly trained pilot. This is definitely an incredible way to make your trip unforgettable. So we've had a look under the water a little there, and now it's time to come back up for air and welcome back the top expert on seaboard expeditions. I have my special guest for this series back with me one more time. And today, Robin West, Vice President and General Manager of Expeditions for Seabourn, is going to tell us about what you should bring to wear and be prepared for all types of expedition cruises. So hi, Robin. Thank you for joining me again. How are you? Hi, Karen. Yeah, great to be back. Uh, thank you again for having me. You're very welcome. So today we're going to be looking at some tips for expedition cruising with Seabourn. And so we're going to be asking Robin a little bit about his tips on what to bring, what to wear, and what to pack for expedition cruises. So Robin, what would you recommend someone to pack when they're going on an expedition cruise to the polar regions? So Karen, what I'd recommend really in, in, in any polar region, whether it's the Arctic or the Antarctic, is to dress in layers. I think that is going to be probably the greatest tip and recommendation from anyone. Make sure that you have, you know, a base layer, a mid layer, a final layer, and also that the final layer is waterproof and windproof from top to bottom. Um, the thing in Antarctica is it's not actually that cold. On an average day with no wind, you're talking about zero degrees Celsius or about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of our guests probably come from destinations around the world that are much colder than that during the winter. So it's not actually that cold. Um, and so the best thing to do is dressing layers to be prepared for different types of weather. So that when you come ashore, if there is no wind, you can maybe take that shell layer off and you can keep the mid layer on. So one of my greatest recommendations is really to, to, to dress in layers and don't forget about the accessory items, things like uh, gloves, things like a beanie. Um, also really important is what's called a neck gaiter. A lot of people dress really warm and then this section is left open and all your body heat keeps escaping. A neck gaiter just keeps all your body heat in and until you use it, you actually don't believe the difference that it actually makes. And so that's a fantastic item too. Also, when you go on an expedition to Antarctica or the Arctic, you're of course going to be stepping into water when you disembark the Zodiac to go ashore. So make sure um, with Seaborn, we actually provide you with very good high quality uh, bog boots. Um, so those are available on board. They're just below your knee. It's like a crushed neoprene. 
And so those will keep you warm, insulated, and dry for your entire experience. But um, beyond that, also gloves. I would recommend to bring two pairs of gloves because sometimes you might get a pair of gloves wet during the day and you may need 24 hours for them to dry. And a spare pair is always great to have for the following day. So a spare pair of gloves is always good. In terms of your camera gear, I would also bring one or two additional batteries because in the cold, in the polar regions, the battery life is quite short on, 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 on cameras and things like that. So it's always good to have maybe a second or a third battery that you can keep on you in a warm spot so that you can swap it out quickly when you're ashore side and to give you that additional battery life. Because compared to what the average person does in the camera, the, the, the battery life can be quite short on in Antarctica. So I think for the average person going to Antarctica, that, that, that really would be good advice is to dress in layers, some accessories, obviously spare pair of gloves and some extra batteries for your camera to be able to continue taking photographs of where you are. And those are excellent tips. And the net gaiter is a really good tip. I hadn't really thought about that one. I thought about scarves, but that just holds it much better and will insulate your neck too. And then gloves too, bringing two pairs of gloves is an excellent tip as well. So thank you for that. Okay, so next up, we've looked at polar regions and what you'd bring and wear in the Arctic and Antarctica. But what would you recommend to pack on an expedition cruise to somewhere tropical, like the Amazon, Polynesia, or the Kimberley region of Australia? Would you recommend anything different between these, or what would you generally recommend to bring to warm weather destinations? So my recommendation for warm weather places really is, um, you know, light, comfortable clothing. Um, a lot of these destinations, it, it's, it's obviously quite warm when you're out in the zodiacs, you are exposed to the sun. So definitely a good hat, suntan lotion, um, and probably like light sun shirts and long pants to some extent, um, you know, to protect yourself from, from the sun. Also, what's really useful, for example, more so if we're in, the, in, in French Polynesia in those areas, is maybe a, a rash, like a, a sun shirt or like a, a rash guard for snorkeling and things like that. Um, sometimes when you're snorkeling in the water, you may have the odd little stinger or something. So either a full one-piece rash suit or just a top of rash guard is quite nice to wear. Um, I would also bring a waterproof bag. You know, when you're out in the zodiacs and things like that in tropical regions, you're quite often in the water, out the water. Um, and, you know, uh, putting maybe having a waterproof bag to put some of your valuables in, your camera, accessory items and things like that um, is quite recommended. Also a pair of water shoes, comfortable walk water shoes. And that may be, I think, a traditional brand is something like a Teva, or you get those shoes now that are more of a neoprene type shoe where you have all the individual toes kind of built into the shoe with a bit of rubber underneath and grip. So definitely a comfortable pair of uh, water shoes for getting in and out the Zodiacs, in and out of the kayaks. Um, and yeah, just uh, light colored clothing. You do get these fantastic sun shirts where you have the sun factor built into the shirts themselves. Those are also quite recommended for some of the um, tropical areas. Also areas where you're snorkeling. If you're really, obviously, on board Seabon Venture and Pursuit, we do provide snorkeling equipment, fins, masks, and snorkels. But I know some people who do it regularly like to bring their own gear and that they're comfortable with. And so if you want to bring your own gear, I would, I would recommend that too if you have space to pack it. But if not, we do provide fins, masks, and snorkels, and 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 a mesh bag, and and the snorkeling equipment in 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 some of the tropical regions. But um, yeah, beyond that, um, no, not 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 a whole lot. Just really long pants, shirt, comfortable clothing, and and a hat, suntan suntan lotion, and a waterproof bag for some of your proof, kind of to protect some of your 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 equipment coming ashore. Definitely. And I think those are all excellent tips and I would second them all. I love tropical areas and snorkeling and scuba diving as well. And these are all really useful things. I always bring my own snorkel mask at least um, as I have quite a narrow face. So I know that it fits me well. So it is handy to bring your own equipment if you aren't average size anywhere or um, if you just have a favorite thing that you like to bring. So those are excellent tips. Thank you very much. So my next question for you, Robin, is does Seaborn supply any clothes, gear, binoculars, anything like that for your expedition cruise? And can you take any of it home or is it all just something to borrow on the ship? And what kind of things are available on the ship so that you don't have to pack them? Well, sure. So, um, 
you know, let, let, let's let's maybe start in the tropical areas. So in the tropical areas um, where we have snorkeling and scuba diving, so we do provide guests with fins, mask, snorkels and a snorkeling bag. So they don't need to bring any equipment for snorkeling beyond a rash vest or a rash guard or something like that they'd like to wear when they actually snorkel. But all the snorkeling equipment is provided by us on the expedition vessels. In terms of scuba diving, um, we provide tanks and weight belts. Obviously, we have a compressor on board to fill the, 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 the tanks, but guests need to bring all their own equipment if they're wanting to do scuba diving on board the vessel. We provide tanks and weights. Obviously, there's a qualified dive master on board who leads the dives. But in terms of actual equipment, guests do need to provide their own scuba equipment beyond the tanks and the weights when coming on board. Um, on board the vessel, uh, both expedition ships, actually Seaborn has a fantastic partnership with, uh, with Swarovski. So every single suite on board the expedition vessels has a pair of Swarovski optics and binoculars. And those are there for the guests to use during the duration of their time on board the vessel. Beyond that, also every single guest receives a drinking, aluminum drinking flask. That flask is a gift from us to them, and they use it for the duration of the cruise, and obviously they can take it home with them as well. In the polar regions, slightly different, there's a little bit more gear that's provided. So from our side, on the expedition in the polar regions, we provide um, a two-piece puff jacket and parka. And again, we have a partnership with Heli Hansen, and we are the official outfitter, or Heli Hansen is the official outfitter for Seaborn. And we have a pup jacket and parka, which is 100% customized and specifically made for Seaborn, from the style design down to the color. And that is also a gift from us to the guests. They can take that home with them. And then in the polar regions, we also provide the guests with a Seaborn Heli Hansen waterproof backpack for them to use during the duration of the cruise. And that item they can take home with them. So in the polar regions, the guests are really getting a parka, a puff jacket, aluminium flask as well as a backpack and all those items are for them to use and to take home with them as a souvenir after the trip. Nice and I think those would be incredible things to take home as well and it's another way to kind of keep a little bit of the experience with you and show your friends as well and I'm sure people would like to do that when they're talking about their experiences. So a lot of the important things are provided, which is great as guests have to take less luggage with them and buy less specialist equipment. So that makes it all a lot easier um, and reduces the cost as well, which is all fantastic. Yeah. And then, you know, in, in addition to that, the guests in the polar regions also get a turn down gift, which is a Heli Anson Seaborne uh, beanie um, for them to use and take home for, for after their trip. And then, as I said earlier, to onboard the expedition ships, any destinations around the world where you're stepping into water, um, mainly the polar regions, we also provide a very high quality bog boot for guests to use for the duration of their trip on board the vessel. That's really great. There's a lot of things that you don't have to pack, um, but you will need. So that's very good. Thank you. So my final question is, do you have any final tips or anything else that you'd like to share? It could be something that's your top tip overall for each destination, your top tip for expedition cruising overall, or something that you would just want to emphasize that you don't miss this, or this is one of the greatest things about any particular area. So, Karen, that, that, that's a tough question in the sense, you know, there, there's so much to see in Antarctica and the polar regions, and I guess, the best way to capture um, what I want to say is, is really when you join an expedition vessel, and many guests are aware of this, but when you join an expedition vessel, engage in every activity that is offered on board. If the expedition team, if we have a day at sea and the expedition team are out on deck, Join them out on deck, spend time out on deck. You'll be amazed what you see when you travel across the ocean and you spend a little bit of time out on deck. So often the average person walks outside for two minutes. Oh, they go back inside again and they see nothing. Go outside for 30 minutes and I guarantee you'll see something. When we have lectures, when we do recaps and briefings, go to every single one of those. It's an incredible opportunity to learn about the destinations, it's an opportunity to ask questions to people who 
sometimes are regarded as the best in their field anywhere in the world. And, and then most importantly, when it comes to the activities, whether we're in the tropics and we're doing snorkeling or scuba diving, whether we're in the polar regions and we have the kayaks out or the submarines, whether we're doing a Zodiac land and the Zodiac tour, try and do as many of those experiences as possible. Even if the expedition team are doing a 2.30 a.m. disembarkation, there's a reason they could be doing that in Antarctica. One of the most incredible things to see in Antarctica is a sunrise or a sunset. There is what's called the golden hour. There is a magical moment where the light is this incredibly orangey, pinky color, and you know when you've seen it, and you know when it's gone. And it's incredible to see. If we wake you up at 3.30 in the morning to see the northern lights, get out of bed and come and see the northern lights. The first time we call you, maybe we get unlucky and it goes from great, and by the time you get out on deck, it's, it's not that strong anymore. The next night, we might call you at one o'clock and you might think, oh, I was out last night at three. Now you want me to come again. Get out of bed, get out and onto the deck because that might be the moment that it just lights up and it will be an experience you never, ever forget. So I think no matter what expedition you choose, whether we're in the Antarctic, Arctic, whether we're ice cruising, whether we're you know in the Kimberley region exploring the Hunter River or the King George Falls, whether we're in the Amazon exploring a small tributary, whether we're in the Pacific and we've offered snorkeling at a wreck or at a remote site. As much as a person is capable of doing, I would really recommend they do everything that is offered on board the vessel because that's going to give you the best experience you can ever have. Expedition travel is extremely addictive. It's You have a, you have a team of experts. I basically refer to them as a, as a, as a, as a uh, walking encyclopedias with you out in the field. Um, you know, to your point earlier, it's different to a cruise. An expedition is so much more engaging. You're going to much more remote places and we're putting ourselves in an environment, in a situation where we hope to have the best possible wildlife encounters. All we have to do is be patient and spend time in that environment and things will happen. So our biggest tip is to really do as much as you can and be as much as you can engaged in everything that is offered by the expedition team. And you will have an incredible experience and realize that expedition travel is without a doubt one of the greatest ways of exploring this incredible world. Thank you so much for that, Robin. That's really inspiring. And those are all amazing tips. And I hope that everyone listens to the tips. And I, for one, really, really, even more than before, uh, want to go on an expedition ship with Seaborn as soon as possible. And I hope after watching this that lots of other people do too. So thank you so much for your time, Robin. It's been absolutely fascinating. Thank you for talking through so many aspects of Seaborn expeditions with me, from the itineraries, things to do, things to see, wildlife, the culture. It has been genuinely fascinating and inspiring. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolute pleasure, Karen. And uh, I, hope we, uh, I hope we see you on Seaborn Venture one day. Me too. So thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Well, that's it from us now on our virtual adventure, talking through the various expedition voyages available on Seaborn. Thank you very much for joining myself, Karen Worrell, and my wonderful guest, Robin West from Seaborn. And I'll see you next time. Bon voyage. Thank you.